built in 2000. We're here at Furnace Bay, a 18 hole golf course with some rich history. It used to be a farm, then a campground. Now it's a pretty prestigious 18 hole golf course. We're gonna walk through each one of the holes here, get some history about the clubhouse that was built in 1930s. It's not as old as you think, but the foundation of this land has some history being in a historical area called Perryville. here at a facility that I've been excited to go out and finally play. It's an 18-hole golf course just on the bay, a true link-style Maryland course that has an interesting history being constructed in 2000. And I'm always a big fan of family-run golf courses, so when we target them, we try to learn as much as we can, but I learned so much by asking questions when I walked in there. So we're going to talk about what we learned and more importantly, what you expect when you get over to this facility. The golf course that turns it into the golf course in 2000 owned the land in 1967. It was actually a big apartment building that housed a lot of sailors because you had the military base right down the street, the Naval military base completely different format now and it's a historical area called Perryville and a, the designer who bought the farm that used to sit on this land which was then turned into apartments was Howard Nerf and he decided to take his late life investment into building a golf course it's got a driving range and some other amenities the clubhouse itself well it was constructed in 1930s although it looks like an extremely old clubhouse it's not as old as you think it was turned into 12 apartment buildings. And then in 2000, the golf course was constructed by the owner of the golf course. He decided to turn his life savings into a golf course. And was it worth the investment? Not many owners build the golf course themselves. It's about 2% of all owners build a golf course. So it's really interesting to see this thing firsthand coming out here and playing the course. Howard's no longer with us, but you do have the sons and the daughters of Howard that actually maintain the golf course to this day. You can see it, but you can hear the train cutting through this golf course and on the holes that is over the train tracks. This is where the actual campground was because before it was a golf course, it was a campground. And the biggest takeaway from this golf course would be that it used to be an old campground. When you get over the train tracks, which is interesting, they have a campground that used to sit there. And we're going to walk through the actual location. But number one is pretty challenging. It's a quick dog leg left. You go too far, you're going to go into the trains. But it's demanding up here. You got the old farm. Because it used to be an old farm, this facility. And the greens are pretty good. Looks like they just got aerated, so they're taking pretty good care of it. Let's take a look. Chip, when you get over the train track. So she said that where the old pump house used to be, which is this, this is where the foundation of the campground was. The course starts off with two strong dog legs, pretty much 90 degree angles here on the first two holes. It's vibrant, it's bright, it's an exciting golf course. They take good care of it, but it's the subtleties like these flowers here right before you get up on this par four. I'll tell you what, you really are on the bay. Take a look at this. This is just the third hole of par three under the gutter. You're still hitting over water here on this par three, but if you miss too much, you'll be in the bay. They did cut down some trees, so the layout is changing in a sense that it's getting quicker play here. And forgot to mention that during the Revolutionary War, Perryville, this area, kind of served as the Continentals Army's staging area. They would get situated there, George Washington frequently stopped Rogers Tavern, which is located during his travels between Virginia and New York City, obviously paying homage to the cannon on the logo. So nevertheless, there's some history here, even though it's a 2000 built golf course the year. I love the little characteristics, the flowers on some of the holes, the bright vibrantness of the golf course. It's a link style, but it gets tight. You can see right off here, you got a little 
dog leg right you gotta be careful there's a stream cutting through they got bells they got whistles to kind of navigate through these sharp dog legs they don't get any tighter than this the course stretches over the 6300 yard mark but because of these dog legs it feels like it's more of a player shot course you got to be careful off the tee and you don't have to bang the ball 300 yards each time you might even find yourself into some problems it's laid out the greens are tight they're small they're not that big you're right off the water so you get that ocean breeze or bay breeze there's a lot of water on the golf course this is right exactly where the camp would have been located and i got to talking with the people inside and they told me a little bit about the history and, and just their overall thoughts of keeping it a golf course it's really nice and it's one of those courses that you just hope doesn't change over time hopefully you can get out here take the trip down here it's pretty affordable you'll pay some money in tolls but if you can get down here i think it's a destination for golf i love the clubhouse even though it's not that big and they also have a wonderful bar room where you can enjoy yourself have a couple cocktails go out there and slap it around and then you have the train that cuts right through the golf course. So if you like engineering and train to that nature, there's not many courses that have to offer that. There seems to be a few in this area, though. That's going to do it for our list. Keep a look out for more videos to come. This is the Parfessor, an independent golf channel focused on the fun, affordable side of golf. If you're not watching, go play golf today.